SmackDown was at MSG, the bloodline has lost its wise man. Kicking the uh, Money in the Bank qualifiers were still taking place. And the crowd were pumped for this week's edition of SmackDown. 17,000 plus packed into MSG. It was rocking all night. WWE scaled back a bit on production of the stages and that to let more people in. It was a crazy Friday night SmackDown. Um, first things first, we'll get into the Bloodline stuff a little bit later. Although they did start the show with like a bit of a brawl between Cody, Randy came in and the Bloodline. Jacob Fartu at that point wasn't there. Uh, Nick Oldest and the NYPD um, manages to split this up. And basically, the NYPD escort Cody, uh, Kevin and Randy out of the building. So they had a, it was a wild, wild start uh, to SmackDown. Uh, it was uh, incredible, but it was a great beginning. It sets you right back to the old Attitude Era days when Austin used to, you know, and Austin used to start and you used to wonder what was going to happen. We know there was a bloodline acknowledgement ceremony later on in the show, or at the end of the show, shall we say. Um, but it was such a great start. It was just craziness, absolute craziness. Um, Kayla Braxton, just as a side note, she finished up with WWE uh, at SmackDown after God, about eight or so year tenure with her. We wish Kayla well in whatever she does uh, going forward. But wild, wild beginnings uh, to SmackDown. So... Money in the Bank qualifiers dominated the matches on uh, SmackDown this week. We had uh, a women's and a men's qualifier. <laughs> Two women's and a men's qualifier for Money in the Bank. Uh, the first one saw Tiffany Stratton uh, qualify against Jade Cargill and Candice LeRae. Candice LeRae taking the, the pin there. Wasn't surprised that, I think I said last week or the week before, that I felt that uh, Tiffany or Jade was going to win that particular woman's match, and I was right. Because remember, if you remember, when we started doing this, we were getting everything wrong uh, in terms of the finishes to matches. I think myself and Dave were doing the Raw review, and every match that we thought was going to be this person ended up being the least person that we expected to win. So this week, it kind of, it did kind of fall under the right pattern that we was expecting. Tiffany Stratton, like I said, winning the first match. I didn't think Jade Cargill was going to win. And I don't see Jade Cargill in the Money in the Bank ladder match. I just think that I'm not well. There's a lot of obviously reasons for it. I think whether she's not saying that she's not ready for it, but I just feel that it would have saved her not being in it. And at least in this match, she didn't actually take the pinfall. Uh, Candice the Ray did. That wasn't a surprise at all. It was just who was going to pin Candice for the win. And it turned out that the prettiest moonsault ever was the one that picked up the victory. Um, obviously, there was a bit with Logan Paul. He was on there this week. He had a men's Money in the Bank qualifier with LA Knight, yeah, and Santos Escobar. LA Knight, again, qualifies for Money in the Bank. Now, if you remember last year, LA Knight was literally the most over person in the WWE, a bit like what Jey Uso is now on the Raw side. LA Knight, of course, was on Raw last year. And was exactly that. He was the Jey Uso of last year. Many people expected LA Knight to win money in the bank last year. He wasn't successful in doing so. Is the second time going to be a charm for LA Knight? We have to wait and see. I didn't expect, well, I said I didn't expect. The last person I would have expected to win was Santos Escobar. That wasn't a disrespect. It was just either Logan. I saw Logan or LA Knight winning it. Like I just mentioned, the last few record, the last few weeks records that we've had, if he had won, it would have been no, no real surprise. But I think LA Knight win is interesting. It does then at least leave the fact of him and Logan to at least stomach slam. Now it could now be that Logan Paul costs LA Knight the briefcase this year. That is a distinct possibility uh, in that to to basically get to SummerSlam for the United States Championship, which I think at that point, LA Knight picks up the United States Championship at SummerSlam against Logan Paul. It's just whether, it's just either two things in this, because Drew McIntyre wants to qualify and he's got his shot on Monday Night Raw um, in what's going to be a, a banger of a match with Sheamus and Ilya Dragunov. Um, it's going to be interesting because either... The CM Punk cost Drew the money in the bank again, like, you know, cost him the title at Clash of the Castle 2. Or does Logan Paul 
cost LA Knight the money in the bank. And that sets up the United States Championship match at the SummerSlam. Or does both happen? It's a distinct possibility that him and Logan could just brawl away uh, and basically take out LA Knight from that match. And then CM Punk can still cost Drew McIntyre the match. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, LA Knight did win uh, this match and qualifies for the Money in the Bank with the BFT. It's going to be good to see that um, going on. But last, Logan Paul cost LA Knight. So that is something that we will have to wait and see, of course, for sure. Now, the next one, the, the, the woman's money in the bank, the second one of the night, it did kind of go, it was kind of a surprise. We had Blair Davenport versus Naomi versus Indy Hartwell. Now, again, I expected Indy Hartwell to be the one taking the, the pinfall, which he absolutely did. The, the, she did take the pinfall. I thought Blair Davenport was going to win this just because of the way that that she'd kind of been getting involved in Bailey's business a little bit. If you remember backstage, she's been doing a lot of talk, you know, a little jaw jacking with Bailey. Perhaps that's where I thought perhaps she was going to get into the money in the bank for a shot to get to Bailey. It's maybe that she'll get Bailey earlier than that, uh, uh, you know, money in the bank or even on the road to SummerSlam. We do know. That Bailey has got Nia, or the win, the women's champion, whoever that may be, come SummerSlam takes on Nia Jax. Um, so could it be that Bailey and Nia square off again, or does Bailey drop the title at Money in the Bank? I'm not sure. I don't think she does, to be quite honest with you. But Naomi was the one that picked up the victory with a full Nelson bomb on this. So a little bit surprising. I wouldn't go as far as saying I didn't see it coming, um, just because, you know. A, because of how unpredictable the money in the bank has been. And B, if it had been Indy Hartwell, then I may have been a bit more, uh, a little bit more uh, surprised, shall we say, by that. Um, but no, not on this, not on this time. Uh, Naomi picked up the fall. And it's going to be a really interesting money in the bank matches this year. I'm looking forward to uh, the money in the bank. Maybe I've always enjoyed it, money in the bank shows. Um, this is going to be no different. Let's say Drew's got a qualifying match on Raw. Um, there is a little bit next week on SmackDown. Uh, Bianca Belair and Jade Cargill go against The Way, Candice Lorraine and Indy Hartwell. The Street Profits will collide with Pretty Deadly. Now, they wanted the bloodline this week on SmackDown. They were wanting to get their revenge on the bloodline. Nick Aldis wasn't allowing it to happen. Um, Pretty Deadly then decided to interject themselves into that conversation, and it didn't quite go down well, and that sets up the match for next week. But the interesting match next week at the moment is A-Town Down Under putting those tag team titles on the line against uh, DIY Gargano and Champa. Is this going to be the moment where A-Town Down Under lose the tag team titles and are we going to start to see that baby face turn from Austin Fury? We've been speaking about this on the last couple of the SmackDown reviews. It's seemingly going that way but we've had to wait uh, a little bit longer for it to happen. Is next week the start, or does it fully turn next week? Does Austin, does uh, Grayson Waller, do they lose the titles and then Grayson Waller attacks Austin Fury at the end? Do they have a rematch? How does it work? Do they even drop the titles next week, or is there going to be a rematch uh, after that? I don't know. It will be interesting to see how if it works straight away or not, or whether they do it over a course of tapings. But next week, it does seem as though we are going to get the tag team title change, perhaps, with DIY dethroning A-Town down under. Um, before we get to the main point of SmackDown and the shocking ending of SmackDown, we must talk about um, NXT. Now, there there was TNA had taped uh, a, a couple of episodes of Impact over uh, in Philly. Uh, Friday night, and there were some. It was a kind of an NXT takeover, for want of the better phrase. Uh, Charlie Dempsey, the son of William Regal, attacks Leon Slater after his match at, uh, in the Philadelphia. Now that is going to be very interesting. There was a number of WWE people were basically pushing to work with Leon Slater in the WWE. So are we going to see? The youngest in charge on NXT in the future. That is going to be something to watch out for. 
it also, uh, Izzy Dame answered Jordan Grace's Knockouts Championship uh, Open Challenge as well. And the no, well, part of the, the other part of the no quarter cap, the no quarter catch crew. Get that right. That's a mouthful for anyone, especially, you know, early in the morning that we are. Miles Bourne <clears throat> also joined Charlie Dempsey that night. So it's going to be interesting. Now, it's really taking off the NXT, <clears throat> well, you know, the NXT partnership at the moment with TNA is really kicking off and starting to get some momentum going. This was going to is so interesting to see now where they do it. Because obviously these tapings will air over a course of a few weeks uh, on NXT, uh, on NXT, on um, TNA. So it's going to be very interesting now to see the direction that they go in following that. My belief would be that because NXT is live, they will obviously, if something happens on uh, TNA one week, it will fall over to the following week on NXT. But we could be seeing the youngest in charge on WWE television very very soon it's very exciting to see uh, i'm really looking forward to seeing what is next with that partnership it is going great guns at the minute more of the same and maybe soon some main roster crossovers for sure um last bit of news just to bring before we hit the main event uh, Dijak, uh dominic dijakovic or whatever you want to call him has left the wwe uh, they didn't renew his contract he posted it out uh, on X uh, a few short days ago about the uh, the fact that they, they didn't agree on the term. I think that's a big loss, actually. I, I, I'd i never thought that he reached the, the amazing, maybe, well, maybe his true potential there. And we say this quite a bit. Sometimes you don't reach your potential and it's not necessarily thought of you or the company. It just doesn't happen. The retribution bit just was never going to work. Uh, well, they never really made it work. It was something there. They had a lot of the foundations right with retribution. I just don't know. They just didn't, I don't think, put enough effort into that particular faction at the time. Obviously, that was during COVID periods as well, which really didn't help without having a crowd in there. I'm not sure that would have done, had the same, uh, you know, as if he had a crowd in there, maybe things would have been a bit different and it could have worked out a bit better. But nevertheless, Dijakovic is now, or Dijak is now a free agent, Free to go where he wants and quite possibly could be coming onto this channel for a conversation about all things WWE and what's next in his future. So keep your eyes peeled, excuse me, on social media for announcements that could mean that Dijak comes to HTTP in the future. Just have to wait and see. Right, let's not talk about anything else other than the bloodline Part of SmackDown. Holy for Jesus. They started Raw. They started Raw. Started SmackDown with, a, you know, that thing with Cody and everybody else. Now it comes to the acknowledgement ceremony. Solo wants everyone to acknowledge him. So Tangaloa acknowledges him. Uh, Tamatonga acknowledges him. Jacob Fartu acknowledges him. And we're so far we're going down the right opportunity, uh, the right the right road, so to speak. Uh, Paul Heyman's turn to acknowledge Solo, and they bring out the the wreath, the wreathing around the neck, and he wants Paul to put that on him and acknowledge him. Paul, who is at this point crying in the ring, Solo, I love you, and I acknowledge that you are not my tribal chief. I mean, Paul Heyman's got balls. I give him that. Massive balls in that sense to say that. They absolutely annihilate Paul Heyman. Samoan spike, flying, well, flying splash by far too. They drag him out of the ring. They powerbomb him through the announce table. And then Jacob Fartu puts the Ulafala, which is the reefing, over Solo's head. And the bloodlines stand tall, minus Paul Heyman, who's practically dead at this point, uh, to end SmackDown. This once again has moved the goalpost within the bloodline storyline, which is, you know, I, I was reading some people on uh, TikTok, listening to some people on TikTok, 
uh, to say it was back to being cinema. Hard to disagree with that. Now we've got all the fundamentals in place to have the return of the real tribal chief, Roman Reigns, uh, very, very soon. Paul Heyman, I suspect, will be off telly for a couple of weeks or so, until, or even until perhaps Roman Reigns returns. But my goodness me, there! this is just, it is entering yet another innings. The bloodline storyline seems to be sticking around longer, but more inner fighting within the bloodline. Now, don't forget that money in the bank, three members of the bloodline will go against Randy Orton, Cody Rhodes, and Kevin Owens. Unless, of course, they add a fourth member to their team and they collide in an eight-man tag. Who knows? We'll have to wait and see on that. But could Roman Reigns return at Money in the Bank? Is he going to be back in time for SummerSlam? We will have to wait and see. But my God, what a SmackDown again. Wrestling is booming. Absolutely booming right now. And you need to enjoy every single second of what you watch for sure. But guys, this has been the SmackDown review. It has been a hell of a week of wrestling again. We've still got Forbidden Door. We've still got Collision. Raw rolls on. Raw is going to be here before we know it on Monday. We don't really like to think about Mondays right now, but Raw is going to be here, mainly because of work. Though. But Raw will be back on Monday. We've got so much more coming up uh, on the Hit and the Turnbuckle podcast. We'll soon be interviewing uh, Jazz as well on the Hall of Fame. Definitely someone who should be in the Hall of Fame, although she's not. Fiona will be back next week for the uh, NWA stuff as well, so keep it locked on here. Of course, I can have a look at our interview. Big thanks to Robbie X this week for stopping by and having the interview uh, with us. TNA stuff will be plastered along the uh, podcast as well. And of course, you follow us at HTT Buckle on Twitter, hit in the term Buckle podcast, all social media outlets. We'll be back to do this week in AEW and a Forbidden Door preview as well as reviewing the Forbidden Door show. But until then, everybody, enjoy the weekend. Buckle down. Stay safe. Goodbye. <laughs>